Okay, the money turnover. We've we've got uh, Gene has got six hundred eighty dollars, and it's, it looks like it's all Board of Health plumbing and plumbing. Products. Are we okay with that one? Yes. I am. Lee and Herb. Yes. Yes, that, okay. that's fine. Thank you. Okay, next one. Well permit for. 555 East State Street. I don't know anything about it, Lee. That has to be you. Uh, has it already been been cited and they're ready to go? Or uh, the homeowner cited it. It's a couple hundred feet away from his current SAS. Uh, he's trying to get the state to see if they'll give him a well because he believes it's salt contamination off 202. He's right across from Al French's um, greenhouse up there. On the Belchtown line. Okay. Uh, so at this point in time, no activity. Okay. So do we have? Are we going to approve this permit? Uh, he certainly has the distance away from his own SAS and his neighbors, so it's okay to go. Cushing was out there with him. Okay, so we can approve that. Uh, the next one is a well permit for 58 Center Street. Cushing again. Are we yep, set for this? Everything is clean over there. Yes. Okay. Are you set, Herb? Yes. Okay. Next one is certificate of completion for 117 South Street. That one is is a change. Uh, when I talked to Kapinski, what Kapinski was going to do is give us the as built, which he's apparently done and he is going to submit a new a new drawing but that one is one herb that you don't i don't think you know we got out there lee called me the water table was two feet two feet higher than than it was supposed to be they had we had to lift the leach field up by two feet and that required going with a with a pump and it's installed. Lee, you you saw the rest of the, the installation. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, they did raise the system. They did put it in a pump chamber. Um, everything's working according to the components in the ground. I don't know if they pulled all the permits for uh, electrical and plumbing because it's, it was a change. It was supposed to be a gravity system, but I'm hoping that they followed the letter of the law and did their due diligence. So do we have to hold that up until have Gene follow up to make sure that there's an electrical and plumbing permit with this? Um, I mean, I, because of the change in design, I'm guessing we probably should to know that everything's been done properly, including the as built. Is that what you're thinking, Herb, too? Let's make sure that because there's electricity and plumbing involved here, that we make sure the right permits are out before we we wash our hands of it? Sounds reasonable to me, Dick. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Uh, Gene, I don't have any any information on this one it's the 2020 installer and hauler permit for complete septic is oh, that just a, uh, yes that's just the um there it's a renewal they get them every year i'm okay with it how about lee and herb you okay sure sure okay the next one is a a title five for 317 Bachelor Street, uh, Julia held. It's a conditional pass. Is this, is the system not being used, Lee? Is that what the issue was? Someone bought the house. Uh, they were revamping it, and whoever it was passed away prematurely. Um, so the house has still never been occupied by for going on the uh, better part of three years now. Okay, so, so it's for sale again. It's a fairly new system in the backyard, a raised pump system, but no one's lived there for a number of years. So we just have to 
receive it as a conditional pass? Is that what we're doing? I believe that's the, the right path to go down. I think so too. What do you think, Herb? Uh, received, yes. Yeah. Then the uh, next one, that, you know what? I'm, when we get on this, this next group, there's four of them that are really fast. And why don't, we, why don't we take them out of order and just get them done? The first sure. one is the town of, town of Granby mask regulation. I just put it there because if we're gonna, if we're gonna get rid of our effort, it has to be at our meeting. Uh, the lawyer cautioned me that we can't just say we're not gonna do it and just drop it unless we say it. So I offer we should just say, okay, we're going with the state regulation and that's it. Uh, that's okay. certainly my sense of things. And you, yep. Lee? Yes, okay. please. Okay. Uh, quickies are resolution of the trash issue at 161 Kendall. I did call Chris Martin up and uh, ultimately I said, you know what, I'll make the call. It turns out I know the guy, he does work for me. And it was just a, a bad misunderstanding that the owner thought the, the trash guy was at war with him. And uh, once I explained that this was to minimize their contact with, with the virus, he was fine. And, and in fact, he asked me, what's he supposed to do with the three weeks of trash that they, he still had? And Chris Martin actually dealt with the trash company to do a separate pickup. So it would be done. So that's all that's done. The all next right. one was a mask, the mask use at all power. And I, again, in fact, I told Herb that he had had such good luck with the phone. And I, I said, you know what? I'll give all power a call and explain to him the situation. And the guy says, you know what? I'll make sure everybody does this the right way. He said, thank you. And I told him that there would be fines involved. He said, I'll be happy to make sure that works. Uh, they, the last of that, of that group is septic repairs and high water table soils with UMass testing being down. The, the issue there is Sheehan asked me a question and sent in a note that in areas where they typically, the, the Lee, where you guys would go in and couldn't do a perk test because the water is up in it, in the soil. The procedure is typically to take a soil sample and take it to UMass to do the analysis and say what the soil is like. And so UMass is closed. And Bob said that the Quabbin Health District is, uh, in fact, under the advice of uh, Charlie Kanicki. As, has said that that uh, they think that the the engineer and the the board of health member have enough experience to be able to tell the class of the soil, uh, and they just once they do that since there's only three classes, and uh, once they do that they just took the slowest rate and that's what they did until this gets over. And Bob asked if we would be willing to do the same thing. My feeling is it's the on a repair that needs to get done that that's the smart way to do it. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's uh, that makes perfect sense right now. Perfecto. How are you with it, Herb? Uh, I'm okay. There, there's a lot of uh, extraneous noises and music and all sorts of things coming through on this line. Yeah, I the one that that just went. I shut my phone off, but my wife's phone is in another part of the room on the charger and it looks like hers rang and I can, if it happens again, I'll shut hers off too. But I, hers isn't the only one. That's the one you just heard. Yeah, that, that noise that we're hearing now is not mine. So, uh, so now let's go back. Uh, first one, police department authority to assist the, the board of health during this, you know, the violations for masks and 
and procedures with Corona issues. Uh, I did take the the sample letter Al sent out and you know modified it. Herb, you marked it up. Uh, so number one, I think is this the first thing? Do we want to do that? And I think we should authorize the police to be our agent. Uh, I'm guessing. I think you guys do too. What do you think, uh, Herb and Lee? Well, if we don't do, if we don't do it, we're just a paper tiger. So, I I really think we need uh, Kevin and the rest of the department to help us if we want to enforce any of this. Otherwise, it's not enforced. I agree. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, because there's, I think there's we lost too much it. going on without, okay. without some extra. Then if we agree it's with just, that. It's overwhelming right now. So we will appoint the, the police department uh, individuals as our, our agents. I did give a sample. I, as I said, I modified that letter. Herb chopped it up. Not chopped it up. He cleaned it up. And I'm I'm in perfect support of that. If that's the case, uh, I'll sign it, and, or I'll, we'll have Gene sign my name to it, and uh, we'll send it out if if that's acceptable to Urban Lee. Do we need a motion? Yeah, I guess we should. Does someone move that we appoint the police? department as our agents through these this corona issue as as it says in that letter is there a motion for that so moved second second that, yes. in favor i yes uh by Are the way you? dick thank you yes, yes. i'm voting yes but by, by the way um uh, you said i cleaned up um, the letter i just want you to know that in my baseball playing days, I was the cleanup. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So then, Gene, you can send that out with my signature as it's written. Uh, okay. They, I've got two of these that are the same, I think, is the COVID 19 contact clearance and then uh, early return to work for healthcare workers. Uh, I, I guess I guess we can we can tackle it here if if we want at this point of the agenda. The the issue now is is even different than when I asked to put this on the the uh, agenda there's as of the 4th of may cdc has a has another policy for healthcare workers and essentially what it says if you're a, a health care worker uh I, i'm just hang on for a second i had someone that was waiting and it looks like i lost them but okay that they've now said that if you're a healthcare worker, that if you are exposed, then then uh, if if you are exposed, I've been a a strange thing here, guys. That we've got, I've got Al and Alex and Kevin all muted. And I'm... Dick. Okay, I got Al fixed. Listen, hey, Dick, just, just yeah. I'll make it real easy. The reason that we've muted ourselves until we oh. need to talk, that way there's oh. no problem. You don't hear anything in the background. That's why you don't hear anything from us. We did it on oh. purpose. Oh, okay. So when I see that, that red thing, you guys did it. Okay, thank you. So, um, walk, walk the, softly and carry a big stick. Yeah. 
So currently what this regulation says is if a health care worker gets exposed, they can continue working as long as they continue to look for symptoms and that they uh, wear appropriate PPE. Uh, according to my source, the local board of health can say that they don't think that that is the way we want the healthcare people to work. So at this point, we can that supposedly I would what was explained to me is that when people are in on gurneys in hospitals, not being able to see a healthcare worker and getting sicker and dying, it's better to have potentially sick people taking care of them than nobody taking care of them. And I guess I have, if it were me laying there, I'd probably agree with that. But then from what I can see in our state and our area, that's not what's happening right now. So do we just want to go with what the CDC is recommending or do we want to be telling apparently the way that that you would stop it from happening is when Sharon Hart does the contact follow up, she would be telling people you cannot go back to work until you're you're cleared by the, the 14 days. So what is our thought on it? My thought after listening to a Maven conference this morning that was convoluted almost beyond belief and complicated <laughs> endlessly uh, that I really don't think I want to make policy or try to make policy, which is different than accepted policy from the CDC and presumably the state. So I don't think we as the Granby Board of Health want to alter those guidelines. Now, not all towns, in fact, what I was told, I believe that, that West Springfield and I, I can't remember, I think Chicopee does allow it, but at least on the old guidelines, uh, at least two of the local cities didn't a lot follow the CDC, but but at least what what are you thinking, Lee? Um, I'm leaning uh, towards Herb's comment. Uh, it's beyond our scope to uh, take this on and do it properly. Well, the, I could uh, support that, that if the three of us, yeah. yeah, I could support the stand as long as it's that you guys feel that way, I could support that. So if that's the case, then we'll do nothing about that. We'll just, we'll accept that as their guidance and we'll go with it. So that's, that one's done. Uh, the next one is, Dick, this is perfect. suggestions for, Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, the person running the Maven discussion this morning about testing and who needed to be tested and how they needed to be tested and how often they needed to be tested and in what circumstances and with what tests went on for almost an hour. And virtually incomprehensible without having a handout, without having written material to review and look. I think we would be foolish to try and do that. Okay, so we're just saying we are taking no action on that and it's just what they, the CDC advises and the state supports, we are also. So the next, our next item is suggestions that Chris Martin asked us for suggestions uh, on restrictions for the use of the parks. 
uh, I, I once again uh, took some stuff that 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 uh, Gene was able to to find from Northampton, who just opened their parks. So I looked at at Granby and modified it, and I sent it out as saying, "Here's a here's some ideas." Herb, you you uh, once again cleaned it up, and uh, I certainly could support what you what you said. And uh, Leah, what is your thought? Yeah, I'm I'm reading. Uh... Herb's uh, review of this and everything looks to be really well thought through, uh, you know, with the exceptions and so forth. It appears to be as much as we can reasonably do. So, Gene, do you, do you have... Well, so, here's another Herb's question. Since... Not... Yeah. Is this possibly going to be another arena um, on a drive-by per se that the police will be observing as well as the uh, brick and mortar locations? I would ex I would expect that. What will be interesting that it isn't clear to me right now whether whether Chris will be saying we agree with you or don't agree with with you, and then whether Chris, in fact, would like the Board of Health to put the regulations on the park use. So I, I don't know that yet. Yeah. I think but, Lee but brings Chris up a, this an point, excellent point. Lee brings up a good point. And uh, if, if we have our police department as our agents, I think the parks would also part of the purview. I, I think so, in my view, that's, that's true. But, but since, but since, Chris actually asked us for some recommendations. I'm wondering if the right step right now is to pass it on to Chris and see and see what he thinks. Because I, I do have a, an issue when you at when Lee asked that and Herb, you say that. If this isn't our regulation, if it's just something that the select board chooses to, to say then in reality, the police wouldn't be doing our, our work, I think, unless we said, if Chris said, yeah, we should do that and let's, let's formalize it and have the board health do this. I'd Sounds suggest fun. that the, the right way to do it is to get, let's send this back to Chris. I'll give Chris a call. Uh, maybe he's gonna end up Maybe he'll go to his board or whatever, and I would suggest that that's the way to handle it. Sure. Okay, then I will do that. I'll give Chris a call tomorrow. What is Maybe. all the extraneous noise that's on this? I don't, I don't know, but I've got a thing that flashed on on. This screen on my screen is the host, and it said that the internet connection is unstable. So maybe we're getting bleed from somebody else. The noise isn't, if we ask the people here that are on with us, is anybody, is anybody the source of this? Could you just tell us? It would, I can tell you right now, it's... It's, I can tell you what, it's the phone number that ends in 2143. If they mute their phone, that problem really? will go away. If yeah. I mute them? That's, 
That's not my cell. Is that you, Lee? It's not me. 2143? That's my phone. I can. I'm 2143, um, but what I'm going to be doing in, a, in okay, about it's... two minutes is um, I'm probably going to turn, turn my phone off and run home and go back onto my computer. The store is closed, so it's pretty quiet in here right now. I don't hear the noise from that phone anymore. So I hate that if you leave, Lee, we're going to be out of business for 15 minutes. So the, the next one. No, I, I'm that I if have, I do it, it's, it's going to be a straight shot. Herb, what do you think? think I hate to just keep moving through this without without Lee. He's on his cell phone. I'm I'm let's, I'm still let's with you. Let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next one I have is al alphabet soup request to use bottled water. And I I I guess I, I sent the thing out to you guys that I was you know to make this meeting move quickly. I took a shot at at trying to get the the guts of our action in front of us so we could work on it quickly. But I talked about this option with Greg Briggs on Dollar General. And he, he pointed out that this is no joke when you end up giving this water out of one of these, these you know, containers to the public that you have that there's a whole big plan that's required to how do you clean it who who ends up changing the bottles how long do you let the bottles stay if they're not being used very much how do you make sure little kids well in this case it was anybody gets near that nozzle and and as i as i thought about it if you look at what was driving this was the owner of, of this business said she was renting the business and all she had was one sink in the whole place and it was in the bathroom and they were using it for washing their hands. I notice now that they're also using it for for cleaning the the buckets for the cleaning the, the building. However, after I went through it and said, why would we do something like this? When I, what seemed to be a very straightforward solution is hire a plumber and put a drinking water fountain in and be done with this forever. And so. Yeah. Mm. Or go to Costco and buy five flats of bottled water. But I'm sure there's a whole mess that goes through that with how do you stop the kids from sharing their water and and uh, I'm just my feeling would be that that we we ask her to do with this in a, a hard plumbing way, not doing it with a, a thing that's very procedural. I can't believe it. You know, I not up to me to decide what's what's economic or not, but but I don't think that this is very different than going to a restaurant who's leasing a building and saying, you know, you're responsible for the ceiling and you're responsible for the floor. And when it's time to replace it, you have to do it. But what are you, what are you guys thinking? What is the, what is our, I guess our answer has to be, are we gonna allow it or are we not gonna allow it? These things probably exist in thousands, if not tens of thousands of locations. Uh, do problems come up with them? Is this an issue or are we making it an issue? I have no idea other than the, what, what Greg told me, the codes that he's dealing with are like and it, and 
And if it can be an issue, I don't understand why we would want to, instead of having a straightforward fix that never comes back again, why would we go with the the one that, that heads towards procedural requirements instead of the root cause fix? That's all. Is there an estimate yeah. of what this costs over a year versus having a plumber come in just so we understand for alphabet soup what the financial issue is? Actually, if you're when you ask that question, Herb, what if our approach is to ask her at our next meeting to come and, and instead of dealing with emails and short little letters? for us to be able to talk to her, to request that she just talk to us and, and find out what, what's driving this. Because I don't know that. You just asked the question, Herb, I have no idea the answer. Yeah, uh, I, I have no feel for it at all, Dick, what, uh, what it costs. But I suspect that it's not cheap to have I suspect that too. bottled water brought in. Is this an issue of public water supply as well, or is that something different here? I don't know. That's interesting too. So maybe then I'd offer that, that, that the appropriate thing is to try to talk to the owner directly and see what's, what's happening. What do you guys think? Well, it's been going on for, she's been there for a number of years. So I don't understand why it's, why it's crunch time. Something and at this point, and at this point, she's not going to have children there until what the 19th of June at least. So, so if we just yeah. ask her to to get on the agenda for the next meeting, it looks like it doesn't hurt anybody. Makes sense. Do you guys yeah. support that? Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. But I think Lee's question was uh, was right on. If she's been here there for years. What's going on now? Why is now different? Yeah, and we don't know. We don't yeah. know, but she can certainly shed light on it. Yeah, she yeah. just stated that the state licensor um, needs a letter stating that the board approves the use of the bottled water. That's all I know. Is that to, I wonder if that's okay. to circumvent the uh, public water supply. I know, yeah, but we, I'm just looking at the list at the of public water supplies, and 55 Taylor Street is listed as Marfrans, but they were um, they've been gone for a long time. Then it was Head Start. Yep. So I mean, well, I mean, I don't know if it's our venue or not to be concerned or to get involved with the financials of an operation, but my guess is that at the end of the day that's what's going on with this location whether or not it's public water supply or not i don't know how many children she services in that spot and if so um is that what this is all about the maintenance of the drinking water they have on site there's got to be yeah. something deeper than we're being allowed to know okay so if gene if you can but, get in touch with her and ask her to get on our okay. next agenda. Uh, sure. Dollar General is our next one in the ponds. I, we have a, there a couple different things happen. One is that we do have the letter from the building inspector who is kind of soliciting our help and her view had sent out a, a comment that you were concerned that we could easily get over our heads with this this thing and and it turns out that that there's according to the building inspector he's had some pressure from above uh non-town above boston above saying that he's got to stay out of the board of health area that if he's got building code problems deal with building code problems that his job is not the board of health 
They're probably right. However, uh, so he told me that he is going to deal with the fact that that the people that supplied him with drawings did not say there were going to be four pound ponds on that property. Nor did, as it turns out, did we see four ponds on the property. However, in the meantime, uh, Gene sent out a letter from the Healy's, who I did talk to. They are the they are the people to the the west, and they're asking us to look at this as a a possible public health nuisance issue. And uh, I don't know as we do that, if you look at the, the nuisance regulations, that they're, they're actually pretty pretty powerful regulations. That, that's uh, chapter 111, section 31. Uh, and it looks like uh, 122, I'm looking at it in front of me. And uh, if we determine that that's a public health nuisance, then we can actually order the problem to be abated. And it, it's, a, it's a very, since I've been on the board of health, we've only used this a couple different times, but it's, it's, a, it's a powerful regulation. So from our standpoint, do we, do we act on this right now? Do we, uh, the building inspector told me he's being pushed to, to give a certificate of complaint or occupancy. He's given a temporary one. Uh, the people from the engineer I deal with from Bowler Engineering actually gave a, me a call saying, hey, things are gonna change. There's gonna be a lot of pressure to get a certificate of occupancy issued. I just want you to know that it's it's coming, but what do we wanna do with this thing? The, the, my feeling is, as we've talked, we've got a couple letters, I think, that went out saying, we think this is a, is a health issue. What it, is, it is a health issue. And it's a nuisance issue. And it's unreasonable for the Healy's to the West to either be flooded or intimidated by it. Or in their case, they're saying what's gonna happen when the mosquitoes start and whatever else is, is gonna grow in that. Well, that's, that's what I'm implying when I say intimidated by it. Yeah. I believe yeah, it they're is really a, getting I believe so too, and I believe the Healy's are being or trying to be pushed around by some corporate entity who is anxious to get a certificate signed off and then the problem gets pushed onto someone else's shoulders, which is unfair for the Healy's. It's you know, by the goodness of a greater power that that Dollar General is not located next to any one of us, we would not be very happy. Um, I'm really no, disappointed in the the way it turned out, as we probably all are. But this is our chance to try to right the wrong. Yeah, I I'm looking at it. I, I guess I'm standing getting some engineering help. Well, I, I would say that. In fact, that's what I was on the note that I was going to send to Greg that, well, I was going to propose we sent. I was saying that what makes this really problematic is that this is not a project to fix it. It's a project first to figure out what it takes to fix it. So this is, this is not an implementation project yet. And so we, we certainly, if we decide that we think it's a public health nuisance, uh, we can tell them that they've got to come in. <clears throat> we could define it and saying there are there are four ponds that, that are, you know, I'm calling it ponds, but they're depressions 
that have been had water in them for certainly more than a couple months. And uh, and I'm thinking that it, you know, if in two months it, it goes away because the water goes away, it's certainly going to be back. Uh, so it sounds like that, that, that Lee and Herb, you're agreeing with with the Healy's request and mine too. That I agree. I agree. It's a public health nuisance, and we should tell them to that we should tell the I guess it's the, the owner is who we deal with, not the, not the engineer anymore, that it needs to be abated. And then we should give them some kind of a timetable to get to us with a plan. Is that is that what Urban Lee that you would think? He needs a new engineer or a different in, different engineering company to come up with a solution here. Yeah, this I agree. Is, the okay. peer review that we got from Ty and Bond didn't do much. But again, that's how they go about doing that. I guess it's not ours other than we're going to order them that they have to do it, right? Agreed. Of course, it will be very interesting, Dick, to see if uh, a dictum comes uh, west from boston and says what are you guys doing yeah. why are you why are you harassing the dollar general people so i hope that's I not the case by the way i really I hope, it's hope not that's not the case either yes i hope it's not the case and i think that from our standpoint we if you guys recall the planning board sent us drawings of this of the the site work and and we commented we looked at them and said this doesn't involve the board of health but those drawings said nothing about having four four ponds out there so so it's not something that we said oh we're we're into this and knew it was coming this, this is definitely something other than what they propose. You want me to take a, a shot at a letter for, for since we've said we're going to call it a public health nuisance, we're going to say that it's at this meeting that it's going, we're going to require them to come up with a plan to abate it. So that action is we're taking today. Then would you like me to take a, a shot at a, a draft of a, a letter going out, you guys can review it and then Gene can send it out after it's been reviewed. Um, yeah, my only question, because I'm, I'm not familiar at all with this avenue is whether or not we're going to need um, council to proceed down this arena, because I'm guessing that the next communication that Herb was talking about is going to be from council towards us. I certainly could get it to the point that we think it's ready for review of the council and then send it to, to, to the council to review. I mean, I, I, I don't know that I'm correct in, in, in requesting that. I'm just wondering if that's where we're heading with this whole. Okay, well, for sure, what what uh, we should be doing is making sure we cite the right regulation and do what go about it the right way. But certainly, if we get the text the way we want to get it, and then let the town council review it before we send it. But if the issue is today, we're saying it is a public health nuisance and we are going to cause it to be abated. You want me to try that? Why don't you do a draft, Dick, and then send it to your number four batter? <laughs> okay, I, I will do that. Yeah. The next one that I have is guidance for summer schools and camps that's a, I took that 
Herb, that's uh, I, actually, I think that was a request that came in to you from Nancy Jenks. That is and, correct. Uh, this is from Nancy Jenks and the schools. Right. That as I'm as I'm listening to what's going on in the national media, I'm wondering if if and the options that they're talking about how to you know protect kids and how do you tell who's sick and how do you there's a whole huge thing that's going on there on the governor's now got a i think a committee on how do you start to think about opening schools up i'm i'm not feeling good at all about advising nancy that 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 the board supports starting summer schools and summer camps until this stuff is resolved. What are what are your thinking, Lee and, and Herb? Well, I think we would be I think we would be out on a limb and looking foolish if we were to develop policy before it's developed by the governor and his minions in Boston. Uh, this doesn't make any sense for us to make a decision about this at the present time. Lee, are you still yeah, there? Well put, Herb. I'm with you. Yeah, okay. Herb is spot on with this. Yeah, I'm not absolutely in support of this. Uh, Herb, are no. you going to? Are you going to get back to Nancy directly, or are we going to send her a, a note saying that, that we're just not at the position and the state isn't even at the position of being able to allow this in a safe way? Do we want to send a Board of Health letter to her, or do you, you just want to go with an informal letter, a, a conversation with Nancy? Well, I think informal would be fine, but it would be better if it came from the Board of Health. I can support that. You want to take a, chance, a shot at this one? Sure. I'm getting, I'm getting too many, too many assignments. Lee, are you in support of that? I am. Okay, so we'll do that. The next one that I have, but it it looks like it's it's a a double one, is that uh, McDuffie? In fact, I thought I don't I, I don't see him on a list yet, but uh, I've had a couple conversations with with uh, Andrew Parker at McDuffie, and the the last. Last here, one. Dick. Pardon? I said, I'm here, Dick. This is Andrew. I could not get the computer to work, but I did do the call in. Okay. So I'm going to paraphrase what Andrew asked, and I'm going to tell you the board what I suggested. And uh, at least it gives us something to start from. What Andrew asked is that they essentially wanted, uh, McDuffie wanted a drive-by graduation. So very similar to what we're going to talk about in a second about the high school. But what I suggested to, to Andrew was that that we would be in a they would need to be in a position that the faculty would be away from first each other so that they had more than than the six feet separation, that the uh, headmaster or whoever is going to do this, whether it's it's Steve Griffin, whoever is going to give out diplomas. My suggestion was to do what Herbert suggested about the the palms at Church of Christ that that the headmaster I'll call would put a diploma on a table that someone in a car could take it off. So the procedure would be that the diploma went down 
the headmaster would have gloves. He would move back to get the required spacing. The diploma would be taken and the car would drive off. They, what I suggested is that they be very careful so that you don't have uh, people congregating before they went in line or after they went in line so that they, they do very much the same as what Jean told me that, that, uh, that Donna Danette did, is they actually staged the people in groups with time so that people weren't all congregating. And what I suggested to Andrew is that he reinforces that, that as much as these kids probably wanna all get together and celebrate, that they're told, no, you can't go to the local watering hole and everybody have a big party that you should leave and, and go your way and protect yourself. Now, I don't know that I'm, on top of that, there's another, another thing that's going on is that the school is having a plant sale, which I said is not something that we're involved with at all because they're gonna sell their plants online, give people a pickup time, have the plant with their name outside on a table, and no one's going to even see anybody, and there's no money exchanging hands, and just one car is going to come and pick up a plant. And I said, that doesn't affect, we, there are no Board of Health regulations that, that cover that. And, but, but what are your thoughts about the graduation, Urban Lee? <laughs> Andrew, could you make it work uh, that way? Uh, we can make it work that way. The other thing that we had had in mind is that we might do sort of a drive-in movie theater set up out in our far field. Um, and we could have uh, the name of graduates and the names announced on a loudspeaker as we usually do. Um, but everyone would remain in their cars at that time, keeping distance. And we so would instruct would people either their, to stay in their How would they get their diploma? Uh, well, we can either call them up as uh, Dick, as Dick and I had discussed, one at a time, have Steve set, step back, have the student come on up, pick up their diploma and leave wipe down the surfaces and then repeat. Uh, or uh, if that is not acceptable to the Board of Health, we could also mail the diploma. How many students are involved, Andrew? Our class is about 80. We have about 30 students uh, day uh, homestay and boarding who are still local, including two still in the dormitories in the senior class. So this is this is going to be for for thirty students. Yes. So is that correct? That just thirty. We only have thirty students who are still local. We do not anticipate that uh, any of our international students who have already gone home will be willing or able to come back at this time. So you would just mail them their diploma? Yes, we'd like them the opportunity to, to at least be recognized, even if it's in a, a drive-in movie theater, sort of a way with uh, people in their cars, windows down and masks on. Um, but we don't want anybody coming in physical contact. This hmm. seems like a, if, as long as you manage the, the fact that the exuberance that kids may have, if you can manage that, doesn't sound very different than what we, what we sanctioned at the Church of Christ at Easter time. 
30 people is not 30 cars is not many cars. What do you know, believe? What got that, got what do you It sounds very manageable. Okay. We uh, also will have our faculty present in their cars. Obviously, that's much easier to manage uh, when with your blessing. But I don't want you to drive by the field on on a Saturday morning and say, Andrew said there were going to be 30 people here. Why are there 75 cars? That would be why. We'd like them to stand and be recognized in front of the faculty if possible. Uh, we are open to ticketing the event or limiting entrance to the event to make sure that the student population stays down. Yeah, you could end up if, if a student brought four cars, all of a sudden this thing starts to, to really grow. And that we will not allow. I'm sorry, Andrew, I, I missed your comment. Oh, um, so number of cars, we would want to limit to one vehicle per student and family, uh, two if there's a split custody situation and uh, the parents have not been living with each other and, and are social distancing from each other but we're not going to allow a tremendous crowd of people. And then we also would like to have the faculty come in their cars as well. Mm. Uh, are you going to film this to send it to uh, the international students? We would like to. We'd also like to announce the names of the international students, even though they won't be present. Yeah. do the uh, the class roll call and you can control entry to the field yes and you so you would spread out the cars and you would ensure that people did not get out of their cars yeah other than to come up to get the the diploma Correct. And you'd set up speakers, I assume, so that people could hear. Either speakers or low power FM broadcast, uh, again, like a drive in. So people Got could it. tune in on their. Yeah. Yes, understand. I, I sort of like the idea. I support it. Lee, what are you thinking? Maybe we lost Lee. Graduating from high school is a big deal. So if it can be done safely and orderly and the way Andrew is describing, I, I could support that. And I do too. So if that, and given that Lee is not here, then we're saying we're supporting it. Yeah. I appreciate your support, both of you. So now with that, let's move right into the Granby. And the, that didn't make, oh, that's right. That was gonna, we said we'll fit it into other. And uh, I think that's kind of the same, thing, Herb, that, that my only concern is that if you've got, if you've got 300 cars at the Granby event, that they, they really try to, what, what Alice was presenting to us was that they were going to basically get themselves lined up inside the parking plant lot and move through but but i would just recommend there that they they do put groups that that's going to be a lot of people to try to control in one place 
what's the number in the graduating class at Granby? 56. Okay, so it's not that enormous. Uh, and um, hum, 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 hum. Uh, so maybe uh, there's a limit on the number of cars per student. So maybe it's more than one uh, and less than four, maybe it's two or three. And so we're dealing with 100 to 150 cars. And is that something that could be reasonably controlled? I hear somebody making a comment, but I can't understand it. No, I couldn't hear it either. And it wasn't me. Now, Al, weren't, weren't you the one that was the, the kind of the champion for this? So I think we're talking about a couple different things. Um, first of all, uh, I know that the school is looking at some different options for graduation, and I believe one is similar to what McDuffie had suggested. What I forwarded to you, uh, Dick, uh, into the board was the um, the school initially was planning on, the high school was initially planning on doing like a teacher parade, like East Meadow did, but um, in the planning of that had kind of switched gears to more of a reverse parade where all the teachers, like you said, would line up in the parking lot, you know, significantly socially distanced and that the, uh, the students and their parents would come drive through, there'd be no contact. Um, you know, there would be no contact, there'd be no exchanging of everything, of anything, it would just be seeing each other, saying hello and, um, and keeping it moving. And um, that's, we've had the last meeting that we had, that was the uh, focus of it. So um, right now that's the best information I have for you. It sounds very similar to what, you know, other things that are being done. Um, I with the, the, the size of that parking lot, I don't see any reason why they, the teachers couldn't be very far apart and it shouldn't be an issue. But uh, I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of it. Um, that's the plan right now. And so they were looking for, or we were looking to see if there was any issue that the board had or any suggestions. But um, again, this was more of a, uh, a reverse parade to say hello to, between the students and the teachers. and. Um, not specifically related to graduation. Ah, uh, not specific. That's right. It wasn't specifically related. So this is, in essence, it should be much easier, less complex, less, uh, 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 less a problem to direct this. From, I can tell you, Herb, from the police department standpoint, much so, much more so, because you know we we call those parades. When people are coming on the street, but the streets are open, and you know people are walking to the edge of the edge of the road, so we would much rather this situation uh, from a public safety standpoint. And uh, we realize that we just have to think about the public health standpoint. Why right. I'm sure, we were talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. My my issue with the public health, the 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 two the two parts, the the actual parade and the teachers. That seems like a great idea. What I, my concern is that that unlike we had with with Donna Danette, where the the kids were basically under the control of the parents, here you're you're gonna if if you do take one or two or three hundred students and put them in a group waiting to go in line, and then when they break up. They end up at Cindy's or at at the Dufrains. Then how do you deal with that as compared with the way that that Donna Danette did it? That said, let's let's try to keep it so it it isn't in some way controlled. Well, but Dick, on social media. Uh, People could arrange a party in Dufresne's 
tonight or tomorrow or the next day. So I'm not sure that that that's really the issue. You know, honestly, I think that um, I, I agree with Herb. I, 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 the, your concern, Dick, is is. That I just don't know that we can really totally, you know, make some sort of prophylactic issue for everything in the future. Um, you know, graduation time's a scary time uh, for for kids and families and police officers and towns. Um, so. I don't think that's going to change. You know, that's 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 not new. That's not new to COVID, the COVID nineteen situation. Um, but if if something came up afterwards where there was a gathering that was you know not safe or not healthy, well, then we would deal with it. Um, we would deal with it as your agents. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's swimming. true. That's that's true. How about if if you look at the at the the mustering of the parade? That is somewhat in, in our control because that's they are in that all in that parking lot. How do you do you not make any attempt that say either you know one class at a time or or you know something or one one grade at a time or or just let it go and say it's going to be uncontrolled? Well, no, I think that's a great, I, I think that's a great point, Dick, and. Um... There was some, if I remember correctly, there was some brief conversation about maybe trying to uh, put them in time slots for by grade. Um, again, it, it was a conversation that went from being, you know, a traditional, you know, drive around parade to this. Uh, that was brought up and suggested, and um, I can certainly forward that back to that group that uh, that would be a preferred method. And, and quite frankly, from our perspective, from public safety, uh, we'd rather not have, you know, the entirety of, of what could possibly be there. If we can break it up into more controllable groups, well, that'd be great. So uh, we're on the same page there, and I'll definitely suggest that back to that uh, planning group. I'm, I'm definitely leaning to where Herb is going. I'm, I'm looking at my, my granddaughter, who's young. She's only seven. But this, this isolation is not a good thing for these kids. And it's, if we can support something that it at least lets them see some other kids it's a good thing sure and i think something to add too dick is that uh you know, the senior class and maybe a few juniors are driving other than that parents are going to have to be involved to bring these kids you know and through 10th they're going to need their parents to give them a ride anyway yeah so yeah. we will have some we will have some adults i mean and hey let's be let's face it some adults are worse than kids yeah so are we, Lee and Herb, are, are we letting this be that, that we're going to let Al be the conduit that, that he goes back to them and, and says that, that the board's supporting it? We want to make sure that the, the social distancing takes care of and that he's going to go after the thing and not, not let it get crazy on the the beginning part of it is that is that where we're where the board is staying i would agree sounds good okay so that is good so that is other than a a note that we just received that i guess we should put it in other right now and that's from from Chris Martin, Gene sent this out. I don't know if Lee and and Herb have you seen this about our budget? The, I saw that. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. And Gene has offered to to it looks like he's looking. Chris is looking for a two percent reduction, and then a five percent reduction. And Gene has offered to take a cut at it. Is that what we would like Gene to do? I what think I'd that like would her be, to do. That would be a great start. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so with that, it is quarter past seven. I have a person waiting, and it looks like it's it's Bert Green. I'm gonna let her in. 
And uh, you've got Bob Stover at 715 as well. Yeah, and that's what Bert is, is it's for Bert Green. Okay. And, and I'm here. Oh, you are here. Yes. So Bob is there, and I'm not sure. I'm guessing that Bert tried to get in. I just thought that I let her in on. Uh, and I'm looking, in fact, it says that Bert Green is with us. But I. I do not, I don't hear her. And uh, so have I inadvertently shut everybody off? I'm no, here. I can hear. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. And Bob, you're, you're still here? Yep. So even though it tells me that Bert is here, I, I don't see her. So go ahead, Bob, you're on. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we uh, are dealing with the comments that were made with the uh, about the plan submitted on Friday. And uh, we are also uh, expanding our uh, scope of options to explore the possibility of installing a, a leach field to replace the leach field that was failed um, by the Title V behind the garage and uh, to see if that would be a superior option to trying to connect to the existing uh, leach trenches and D-boxes for the house. Uh, so that will consist of um, completing a, a soil evaluation that was started uh, on behalf of the Title V exam and included with the Title V exam uh, that found a water table at 69 inches. So uh, we would do another uh, uh, soil evaluation pit and conduct a percolation test and see where that got us. Uh, one question in our minds is that uh, the the code and its list of uh, types of establishments doesn't include a garage like like this one or any garage for that matter. Uh, I've studied that uh, list of um, of establishments and the uh, the design flow stipulated for each type of uh, establishment. For example, a single family residence uh, is 110 per bedroom and uh, with a minimum of 330 gallons per day. So uh, we're looking for something like that that would be suitable for this garage. And uh, the closest thing that I see is uh, in the list, there's various camps. One of them is a day camp with a toilet and sink. And uh, they uh, say that, that that should be designed at uh, 10 uh, gallons per day per person. And so that would raise the question, well, how many persons would be using this garage? Now it's a four bedroom house and in Granby, uh, you add the fifth uh, bedroom, so to speak. And uh, that would uh, be the equivalent of a, a house that could, and a septic field that could handle 10 people a five bedroom house. So uh, I'm thinking that we could take that 10 gallons per day per person times 10 uh, to size some kind of uh, soil absorption system that would then be uh, installed using the existing septic tank that's in the ground now behind the garage. Hmm. Uh, so what Bob, you, what this, would, go ahead. This is Herb. Uh, yeah. I, I was always mystified, uh, you know I'm a rookie at this, um, but I was always mystified why that wasn't the very first option to consider here, rather than the 
complex issue uh, that we've looked at with the designs. So just making a comment, that's all. Yes, and uh, that, that has been my inclination from day one as well. Um, other people have been contributing their thinking and, and some were concerned that, uh, that they might be put in a position of having to build a, a super large leach field for, uh, for this garage and, and that worry uh, caused them to look for other options uh, including uh, converting the septic tank or hooking into the existing uh, leach field serving the house. So that's when my I, understanding. When I first talked to Greg, my first thought was, okay, we put in, this is Bert, by the way, uh, Bob, um, is that we put in, you know, we, we put in the homeowner, Herb, I don't think I know you, but I know everybody. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Um, Thank you. We have all this new pragmatics with, with Zoom meetings. Um, that was my first thought is to just redo that. And um, it was Greg who told me that that would be prohibitively expensive. Uh -huh. I, I don't know why. I mean, again, I this is not my area of expertise. So, Bob, let's let's go back. The, certainly, if you said, "Gee, I'm going to put in a a leach field for ten gallons a day," that that would be a crazy thing. And I know you're not doing that, but right. but uh, in the days of long ago, we used to have some minimum size systems and you know getting in the ground and and you know digging uh, putting a leach field in that's five by five is it kind of a lot of work and with not much bang for that buck uh what are you thinking you th i know you said multiply you know 10 gallons a day times times what did you say, 10 people? Yes. So you're saying 100 gallons a day? That, from my standpoint, that's as long as you didn't end up with something that's tiny, 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 that that seems like a reasonable kind of output. That, that basically what it's saying is instead of a deep system that's sitting there that got everybody into trouble because the bottom's too deep, too low, uh, having a shallower one that is, it certainly gets rid of electricity. It gets rid of- It's rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that disappear when you do that. A whole yeah. bunch of things. So Dick, my question is from a, uh, or Bob, uh, from a, um, state standard perspective? Is there a minimum size uh, SAS as there is a minimum number of bedrooms allowed in uh, a state uh, house to be constructed? You know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. And uh, this chart that I referenced earlier, uh, it, it gives some types of establishments minimum uh, and others it does not. And uh, this camp that I uh, referred to uh, has no minimum. But I certainly agree with Dick. If you're going to do this, you're not going to put in a five by five system. If it could be something like 12 by 35 or something along those lines, uh, yeah. that would seem worth the effort to me. But of course, I would welcome your opinions too. Certainly, when you start looking at, at system, that's a pretty big system. I, and and I, I'd have to look back. I think our old rules were probably like that, that the minimum bed size was 400 square feet or something that, that uh, you know, I, yeah, I get the, I'm probably at a, a spot that, that I should say I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've is it possible for you to get back to Bob with the minimum size? Well, I, Bob, I'm guessing a system like that is more than a couple hundred gallons a day. It's it's uh, 220, but of course I'm assuming a rate of 20 
as a perk rate, which I'm doing that to be conservative, to assume the worst case scenario, and it, I would guess it would be a faster perk rate than that. Yeah, that's what I was. It's just to give them something to to work in that, you know, something that if you're looking for a, a couple hundred gallons a day, Bob, you, you said, again, I think that's a pretty big system that you're, that you were just floating out there, but you said that is, Correct. that is a couple hundred gallons, huh? More than that. Yeah, I think it ended up in the vicinity of, uh, of, um, two, 220 actually, um, Uh, well, I see here I, I've, in my pencil calculations that uh, it resulted in 190 square feet. So that actually could be uh, satisfied by a 12 by 16 bed. And uh, so somewhere between 12 by 16 and 12 by 30 uh, seems reasonable to me. And and uh, perhaps uh, twelve by thirty is too big. I would, if you were just kicking around numbers like, you know, gee, let's do this for a couple hundred gallons a day. Mm -hmm. That that seems that would seem like it's more than anybody would ever use. On that yeah, Dick, thing. you've been and in the garage several times. Yeah, and it's and it would be if you're getting down to a system that's looking at a, a couple hundred square feet for a little place like like that. It, I don't know, Herb and Lee, what are, for me that seems reasonable. If in fact yeah. this would work it just obviates so many complications that we've been trying to think through. If this worked and, uh, and the size were 12 by 16, uh, gosh, what, what a nice resolution to the problem. A nice resolution, a clean resolution to the problem. The question is, Bob, do you think no one, let's assume that the water table really is where, actually you should be able to take the water table that's been established. If I, I don't know how deep the, the tank is, but it sure means though, that we ought to be trying to stay away from a pump. So we, if you're, oh, absolutely. I think yeah. first, oh, yeah. we start that's, by calling, that's part of we, the reason we start it. by calling it a repair. By calling a repair, that gets you at a, only a three foot separation. And we ought to try to make that work. Because this is to miss it by a few inches is, is crazy, crazy. Yeah. So what you're going to need to know, though, is that if you're going to go with our regulations, if you're just wing it before, you know, take some rough ideas. If you're if you're going to need that that one foot separation, then you need, according to code, the member of the Board of Health has to be either a soil evaluator or you've got to get another soil evaluator to actually do the man interesting there is already she represents been a the board. Soil. you you've got she and Bert was she and the guy that was in there that did this water table evaluation yes so you would have yes, to get a second yeah. soil evaluator yeah so so Bob, are you okay. a soil evaluator? Happy to do that. So that gets, so what would yes. happen is that would get us through the, 
the state requirement that we would end up saying that that Sheehan was the board's soil evaluator and you would be you would be the owner's evaluator that gets us through and that fixes the the request for for uh, the three foot separation instead of four yes so so we could do that should it come so to at, that? at this so at this point we're not acting other than to say that that we're we're going to wait for you to do this next step is that is that what you're asking for can i ask a question well, we'll be we we will The next step, as I said, will be that uh, we'll, be we'll uh, schedule a soil evaluation with you. Wait, uh, Bert, Bert's sitting there. Who are you in. speaking to, Bob? Bert has a question. I have a question. Do Here, we need ahead, another Bert. perk test done? Do we need another perk yes. test done? In my understanding. Okay. Uh, and yes. Dick, is that yes. done we with need, you? We need a perk rate. Mm -hmm. no. And that still be done so in Bob May. Would, the, the leave, leave witnesses the the repair perk test. So that would be that that Bob would have to schedule that with Lee and get get done so it, it right. has to be a perk test and a water table evaluation and uh it sounds before yep. we close here we're yeah. we're saying that that a couple of gallons a day is what we're we're gonna allow for a design as Ur urban lee is that what we're saying yes that's my understanding what did you say a couple gallons a day you mean that's what hundred. the actual would? Oh, a couple hundred. That's yeah, I didn't understand that a couple yeah. of gay, uh, but a couple hundred gallons. Yes. Okay, so that that gets us. So we have an action. You know that that we're going to use shins. Uh, water table of that other one uh bob if, if yours is way different than that then we get in a bind but but uh, if it's essentially the same we've got the boards and with lee there with you so you're going to do the, the perk test and we're saying a design for 200 gallons a day and that sounds like you're in a a thing that's in the neighborhood likely of a 10 by 20 bed or something or or 12 by tw whatever it is 15 by 15 a little bit yeah sounds is that, like that is that correct okay correct have a good evening we've got our last person Gentlemen, thank, thank you for your thank time you so is on okay Thank Have a you, good Bert. night. Nice to meet Bob you, Bert. I'm going to sign off now. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, good now night. I don't know how to shut you up. Here. I can probably shut you off. Okay. Okay, we have Mr. Pasquini. Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. We, we, I can. And, and, uh, Lee and Herb, can you hear? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. We asked you, Gary, we asked you to come in. Yeah. Well, you're not really in, but, but, uh, to visit with you because it's, it's been a very, very long time since you worked in our town. Yeah. And when we have when we have installers that are essentially new, we just want to talk to them for okay. a few minutes and to 
to see basically that 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 we all feel good about each other and yep. in this particular case wondering that in the years that you've been not working in the town do you have licenses any place else yeah belchertown westfield uh, southampton holyoke southwick okay are they active licenses right now yeah i got uh two foundations going in belchertown i'm doing two systems there westfield's active we just actually agwam i just did one a call couple months ago in Agawam. Yeah, they're all active. Okay. How many how many systems do you do you put in a year typically? Well it all depends. Some we do sewer lines, some around here are city sewer, but maybe a dozen to maybe a dozen to twenty probably okay. somewhere in that area. Yeah. Uh what kind of equipment do you have? We have a 315 excavator, skid steers, dozer, trucks, 10 wheelers, triaxles. Huh. Yeah. So some equipment for sure. Yeah, you when, don't remember when us? You we used put to... in a system. Uh, yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. When we did. I can't... You know, but, but uh, when you put in when you're actually these days yeah. are you on the job are you the, the crew chief when you i'm, when I'm you the guy i'm not gary i'm his, i'm not gary i'm his son i'm a vice president i'm half owner of the company oh okay it's, it's just the two of us that's the only two guys that do the work just me and him oh yeah yeah so i'm um, always there and he's always there yeah one of if the I heard Okay. One of the questions that, that I always ask everybody mm -hmm. is if you start in on a job and you, yes. you get into the ground and find out what you're seeing in the ground isn't what it says on the drawings, yeah. what do you do? Well, you've got to call the engineer and the Board of Health if it's not the same as what's on the plan. That's the right answer. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, what are Lee and and Herb? What are your What do you have for questions and, and thoughts? But I mean, but there again, if the if the if the thing's going to vary, I mean, that's the other reason why you guys do a strip inspection too. If it doesn't, then you can come out and look. So I mean, that covers. I mean, most engineers got to come out and look at it. You know what I mean? So they would see it too. You know. And if it wasn't what they wanted, then we'd have a problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it turns out that that uh, if things don't go in the way that they say they're supposed to go in, yeah. you're the guy with the license. The engineer's got a stamp, but but yeah. you're the license to put it in. So when when things don't go right, it's it's not a good thing for the guy with the license. So what we all want to do is make sure it goes, it does go right. And then yeah. when things happen, you want us to be the guys that are right with you saying, everybody knew what was going on and we all are in it together. Yeah, absolutely. Herb, what did, and Lee, what do you have to, to, to say? Um, as long Sign as him up. those two guys are going to be doing all the work and uh, they are aware that we require a subgrade with the engineer, um, I can't foresee we're going to stub our toe on this one. I don't either. I'm okay. I'm okay for sure yep. with this. And uh, I would agree. And I think we've got guys that are more than capable of doing a great job. Yeah. So where is yes. this where is this job? South Street. South Street for Steve Foster. Neil Jackson designed it. We've done a lot with Neil too. So if you have any questions, Neil can tell you about how we do things. We did a okay. bunch in, in uh Belcher Town. Is it Neil. a fill job or is it a fill yeah, it job? It is a fill job, yeah. It's fill, it's wet. You gotta pour ballast on top of the tank. Gotta move the tank away from the house quite a ways. It's it's 
It's a good sized job. Okay. Okay. So you definitely on on South Street, one of the things that you should you should be watching for right now is we two weeks ago we had a problem that that uh, we did water tables based on colors and we went in and did the strip and the water table the physical water table even without extra rain was two feet higher than the the models wow and so it was a wow. it was a big surprise for us uh down the road on morgan street uh again a couple weeks ago we went in and saw a water table was up six or eight inches above above the model so you're in a spot that you really really want to be aware that stuff for some reason isn't necessarily what you think you're going to get into so just watch for it okay okay I can so you, you know especially if you're going to be working near it be aware that that you might have to make the call saying this isn't what it's supposed to be okay so i guess we're done okay. we're all set and you've already paid for your we did yeah. given gene all the stuff she needs i believe he has yep so gene yeah. you can Yep. Gene, are you still on? So we're at a spot that I that, am. Uh, you can just sign. You can sign the sign the license. Yep. So so with that. And um, do you want Adam? Do you do you want me to mail it to you, or did you want to pick it up? No, you can mail it. That's fine. Do you have the the address is on the check? If you have okay. a copy. Okay. All right. I will do that. Go to the garage. So does the Is it 90 Service a, Star Way? Yes, 90 Service Star Industrial Way, Westfield. Okay, thank you. Yep. Do, so you were just going to ask a question. Yeah, do you guys, uh, does, does Granby require like the Board of Health to come out and do a bottom of hole inspection? So I yes. know you yes. got a call? Okay, all right. Because everybody's different. Belchertown doesn't, some do, some don't, you know. It's all different. So I will get a hold so of So you would be guys. calling Lee. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We know how to get a hold of Lee. Yeah. Are we uh, finished? Okay. I think so. Gene, are one, we finished? No, just one more thing, the meeting okay. minutes. Right. Meeting minutes. Oh, we have another, we have another one besides that. I'm okay with the minutes. Now, we have what, the meeting oh, minutes. No, we have to say what date they are for the last meeting. Um, April 28th, yeah. April 28th, yes. Can you hear me? I was okay. Well, I think I made comments. Yeah, I Hello? Can. I made some. Yes. Okay. So Herb made comments and I put comments on top of his. So those are the right. minutes, right? Right. And I'm Correct. okay with that. Herb, Lee? Yes. Yep. Okay. The other, I had talked to, I had talked to Chris Martin about the mosquito control district. Okay, I'm all set. And he said that the yes, well said. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Okay. And he said that the best way to deal with this is for us to get an appointment with the selectmen on their meeting on the 18th. So next Monday. He was going to put us on our. He was going to put us on the agenda. And uh, tell us when would we be there? Uh, are are we going to her? And Lee, are you guys planning to to uh, be at that meeting? 
It'll be a Zoom meet. Well, it's uh, not Zoom. It's something else. Okay. All right. But you're just informing yeah, me what? of it, so you know I had to Hang on, I, I couldn't understand. I said you were just informing me of the meeting, so no, I had not planned for it. Okay. Uh, I thought, well, Obviously, it didn't go out. I thought I, I tried to send it out to everybody saying it was happening, but, but what would happen is we would get put on the agenda. Gene would have to post the meeting, so he's got to do this by, if the meeting is on Monday, Gene, then we have to know by Thursday, right? Um, Friday. The, Are you there, I would Gene? have to post it by Friday. So can you hear me? You're on vacation next week. I can. Yeah. Yes, I can so post it on Friday. Gonna... I will be here. Okay. And my understanding is that we can take the minutes, we can get a copy of the selectmen's minutes and put them as our minutes as long as the minutes were taken so that you don't have to be involved with the, the meeting, Jane. Okay. So I'll have to get after Chris Martin on meeting at the 18th. Okay, I will get after him. So is that okay. it? As an aside. As an aside. That's it. I think that I think the quality ahead, of the audio and I think the quality of the audio and video for this meeting was not good. So I think if we have another meeting and it starts off with this poor quality, we need to try it again. Recycle, recall in, and see if we can establish better connections. This was really not good. Yeah, I, I agree. And I keep getting these flashes saying that our, that our internet connection is is faulty so that's probably what's happening i don't know if i can if i can completely recycle if we we probably can individually go in and out but i think i can't i can't close the meeting and restart it uh i'll find out how to do that well i think that would be Excellent, because this was really was a trial. It was, I agree. Okay. It wasn't good. Thank you. Okay, everybody, good night. Thank you all. All right. All right. Good night.